Hey everybody, this is Aaron Sweeney here with uh, FlexArm and FlexBNC. Uh, welcome to our first MasterCAM tutorial video. Uh, this will be the first of many to come, I'm sure. Um, basically, we want to kind of explain and show people uh, how easy their, their parts can be programmed through MasterCAM. Um, I, I know our customer base being uh, primarily fabricators, guys who don't have a, a lot of CNC experience or G-code. Um, and a lot of questions that I've been asked here recently is, you know, how easy is it for somebody who does not have that experience to, to learn it, to understand it? Um, and, and it's not that hard once you, once you get the hang of it. Um, we've had customers who have picked it up very quickly. And, and so basically we just want to kind of show the, the ins and outs a little bit of the CAM software that we use at, at work, Master CAM. And we'll show you some, uh, some basic operations, some drilling, some slotting, some chamfering. Um, we're, we'll keep it simple here in this first video and uh, we'll, we'll create some more videos with some different operations to kind of show you the step-by-step -step process on how do, how do I take my 3D model part and turn it into a finished product off of my machine. So um, yeah, that's kind of what I'll be uh, showing you guys here. So we'll kind of get started here from the beginning. Uh, I had one of my engineers draw up a 3D model for me, and you can see him right here in my screen in this folder. Um, the the FlexCare tube is going to be our finished part that he created, and uh, it, it's a part that's made out of two and a half by two and a half square tubing with an eighth inch wall. And I also had him create just a blank tube, and I'll, I'll kind of get into that a little bit more uh, when I dive into uh, th this process here um, and explain why I had him do that. Um, so yeah, like I said, uh, this, this is just going to be a, uh, just a short introduction video on how to do some simple operations here in MasterCAM. So I'm going to go ahead and um, open up this step file here. Uh, MasterCAM is very, very nice as far as uh, the, the type of files that it can open. There's a, a wide range of different files, step files, IPT files, XT files. Um, so, you know, as long as MasterCAM can support it, uh, you're in, you know, you yourself or your engineers uh, can almost use, you know, virtually any CAD software to create your solid model for you. Uh, so I'm just gonna open up this part right here and we'll get started. <clears throat> and like I said, these are some pretty simple processes that uh, I'm going to show you here in this first video. Uh, and, you know, if there's many different types of parts, different operations that you can do in MasterCAM. Um, so, you know, if anybody has a question on their particular application, uh, feel free to kind of get a hold of us if you've got some MasterCAM specific questions. Um, you know, I'll, I'll kind of be the one to help out with that. <clears throat> so here is our part here, the two and a half by two and a half inch square tube. And you can see we got some holes and some slots on it. So <clears throat> basically how, how this works is to create your program. Your machine is going to run, uh, you know, what, whatever you program in MasterCAM, it's going to run it off of a certain location. Uh, in MasterCAM, that's what we call down here our WCS. It's our work coordinate system. And you can see the gnomon here that it uh, placed in this on this part uh, as kind of like a, a pre-setting. Um, so what you need to do is you need to, you're, you're going to program this part off of wherever you're going to um, find your work offset on your machine. Um, so what I have been um, telling a lot of our customers, you know, with our big open bed machine, uh, you got all kinds of space on that machine to put these parts. Uh, and, and what seems to be the easiest thing, in my opinion, is uh, locating whether it's square tubing, you got a flat bar, you got a round stock, you're going to throw it in some vices on the machine. Um, but if, if it's a big, long part, uh, what, what I seem to be the easiest thing to do is to locate your parts um, in, in the same location, if at all possible. And, and the reason why I say that, um, so if I was to program this part, which I'm gonna show you here in just a minute, um, my X axis, which 
uh, essentially runs left to right on my machine. Uh, my Y axis is going to be front to back. And then my Z axis is going to be my up and down. Um, so when you're loading your parts on your machine, if you're capable of locating, you know, five different parts into the same location, then in Mastercam, you can program off of that same location on all, all of your parts and run them off of the same work offset on your machine. Um, now, is, is that always the, the best thing to do? Maybe not. Um, and, and like I said, every, every situation is gonna vary, um, but if you can locate as far as your X and your Y axis uh, in the same spot, it really cuts down on setup time. Um, and I'm sure most of you know that uh, when you run a multiple parts, the, the thing that takes the longest normally is your setup. You know, are you tearing down vices, loading vices, loading different tooling? Your setup is, is normally the longest process. Um, so to cut down on that process as much as possible is really um, helpful. So, and, and you can use your programming to help you out with that. So the first thing that I need to do <clears throat> um, to get started here is I need to create my WCX. Where do I want to program this part off of? So if I was gonna load this part into a machine, um, you know, as you can see, I really don't have any machining that needs done here on the left side. So I'm gonna bump this up to a, a hard stop on my machine, whether it be, uh, you know, a stop that you have on your vise, you got a piece of angle bolted down to the table, um, something that you can push this part up against to keep that x-axis location consistent. So my x-axis, or my x zero, is going to be the left side of my part here and I'm going to make the back side of this part my Y off my Y zero um, you know if I'm using some standard Kurt vices machining vices uh, you know your back jaw is fixed so it's not going to go anywhere so kind of going back to uh, what I was saying about loading different parts um, if I'm just using some standard machinist vice and my back jaw is not going to move then I can program off of that back face on my part because it's gonna be the same no matter which part I throw up there on the machine. <clears throat> um, now when you, as you can see here, I've got a radius uh, on this part. So essentially my, where, where my back face of this part and my left side of this face meet is really up here in a corner that is not there. So what I am going to do is I'm going to go to my wireframe tab and I am going to draw some lines. So I'm going to pick this point here, bring it to this point here, and then from this point here, and I'll come down to this point here. Okay, so I've got two lines here. Let me change my color here. That way we can see the lines I drew there, the blue lines. Um, so, but as you can see, they're, they're not touching yet, right? So I want to extend those lines out. So I'm gonna extend, we'll make this a little bit longer than we need to, just so you guys can see it. Um, now I'm gonna, I see over here, I clicked extend and then I'm gonna extend out one inch. Um, depending on which side of this line I, I click, it's gonna extend out farther in that direction. So I wanna extend out, an inch that way, and I want to extend an inch that way. And, and as you can see, I've got my crosshair right there. Now this extra line up here, you know, I really don't have any use for that. So something that's kind of cool here on the wireframe is I can go to divide and delete. And what that does is um, it takes this intersection here, and um, what I can do is get rid of the line that is Kind of on the outside of where those two lines meet so i don't need this extra line here so i'm going to delete that line and i'm going to delete that line green check for all good so there is where my left side of my part and the back side of my part meet is in that corner right there so what i'm going to do is i'm going to program this part off of this corner um, so now that i've made that corner the next thing i need to do uh, is set my plane. And as you can see, this gnomon here that I said earlier was preset. Um, I want to create a new one. So I'm going to go up to this plus arrow here. And I'm going to select dynamic. Dynamic basically just lets me put this gnomon anywhere on this part that I want to put it. 
Um, so I want to zoom in here to that corner and place that center ball there right on the, the corner there. Okay, now I'm not done. As you can see, my, my Z axis is actually facing, you know, down the right side of my part. So I'm going to take this gnomon and rotate this. So my Z is going up and down. So I'm going to go negative 90. Enter. And I also need to rotate my X and Y here. So I'm going to get my mouse to move. We'll go this way. Another negative 90. Okay, so I've got all my uh, axis going in the right direction here. So over on my dynamic plane tab, I am going to name this. This is going to be the first operation of this part. Um, if you have a part that is going to require more than one operation uh, and you got to create a different plane for each operation, I, that's how I tried to name my my plane. So this is going to be my op one top. Um, I'm going to keep everything else here the same. Now here in the work offset, um, if you're familiar with CNC machines, you have multiple work offsets on your machine that you can set uh, your, your locations to. Um, and a lot of people that I know don't even really mess with this a whole lot. Normally the kind of more common work offset is G54. Um, so in Mastercam, uh, what I can do is I can go to manual. I'm just going to set that to zero. So when I post this program out, once I'm all finished, uh, my, my program will post out to G54. You can change this number here if you want to use G55, 56, uh, and so on. Um, but we're just going to stick with 54. So I'm going to green check. And there you can see my nomen is exactly where I need it to be. Um, just for the, the sake of not having these extra lines here, now that I don't really need them anymore, I've got my gnome in place where I want it to. Um, I'm going to go ahead and select these lines and get rid of those. Okay, so I've got my WCS. And what I'm going to do <clears throat> is uh, the next thing I need to do is select the machine that I am going to run this part off of. Uh, uh, each machine in Mastercam has its, its own post. Um, so I'm going to go over to the machine tab, go to mill. Uh, just for the sake of this part, I'm just going to use our um, our Hoff 3 axis mill from FastTech that they've uh, helped create for us. <clears throat> uh, and here shortly, actually, we will be finishing up our post uh, for our Flex CNC. So that will be an option that, uh, you know, if you are a customer who has purchased one of our machines, um, there are some codes that are kind of flex CNC specific, um, nothing major. Um, uh, the, the control itself kind of emulates a FANUC control. So a lot of the M and G codes are uh, kind of your more common uh, GNM codes. Um, but there are some slight differences. So we're going to, we're creating our own posts. That way, uh, when you post out your programs, you don't have to do uh, any modifying to it to, to get it to run the way you want it to. So if I'm going to go back over to my toolpath tab here, so here I've got my first machine group with my uh, Hoff 3 axis mill uh, machine. <clears throat> I'm going to go down to, actually, before I do that, what I need to do is I, that uh, blank tube that I had mentioned earlier that I had my engineer draw up for me. Um, I want it to merge that into this file here. Uh, and, and really the only reason I want to do that is so once uh, I get through this video and get this part program, uh, having the blank stock there, because as you can see on this part, the holes um, and the slots, that material is already cut out. So if I was to simulate <clears throat> this uh, this program once I'm all done, you, you're really not going to be able to see much of anything because that material is no longer there. So I want to import... Um, just a blank tube. That way, when I go to simulate this part at the end, you can actually see the material being removed. Um, so I'm going to go up to File. And I want to merge. Oh, let me get rid of, let's see, all files. And I'm going to bring in the blank. So as you can see now, that it's kind of shaded in there. So I've got a blank kind of overlapped on my part there. Um, and I'm good at where it's placed, so I'm just going to green check. 
Okay, now let's go back into files. <clears throat> so I've got my machine group name up here, and I tend to name my my group as you know if your part has a part number, a part name, um, put them both in there. That way, when you post out your program, uh, the the group name will show up at the top of your program, so you know that you have selected the right program when you pull it into the machine. Um, so I'm gonna call this Flex Care tube. So here I've got the Haas 3 axis mill and here is the, the post that it's using. Um, so I'm going to go over to tool settings and change my program number. So this again will, um, will be the program number once you post it out at the end. Um, a lot of different things that you can select here. Uh, the only thing I, I like to do is I like to check this one of duplicate tool numbers. Uh, when I go into creating this program and I'm doing different operations. If I select two different tools that are using the same tool number, uh, MasterCam will prompt me, you know, kind of give me a warning like, hey, you've got two tools here that are using the same tool number. Um, so I know that I need to go in and change one of those. Uh, next thing, and we're gonna go into stock setup. Uh, this is kind of like what I was talking about with bringing in that solid tube. Um, I wanna use that solid tube as my stock, that way when uh, we go to do the simulation, you can see the, the material being removed. So I'm gonna click solid, and I wanna select my solid. So I'm gonna select inside here on the blank tube, and green check. Clear my colors here, and we're ready to rock. Um, so over here on the left, on the, the tool path tab here, um, you see I've got my flex care tube is the the name of my uh, my program essentially um, and then it brings down this drop box for my first tool path group um, now what I will kind of explain is what I like to do is I like to try to keep my master cam file as clean and easy to see as possible um, so like I was saying if you've got multiple operations uh, with your part and it's all going to be in the same master cam file now you can create multiple groups to try to keep things um, kind of grouped and cleaned up together to make it easier for uh, your, yourself, really. Uh, if you need to go back in and change anything in your program and you know exactly what tool you need to change, if you keep your, your file here, your MasterCam file, nice and clean and organized, uh, it makes it a lot easier to go in and uh, make those modifications. So I'm actually going to rename this toolpath group to op1. And then with this part only having one operation, uh, I'm just going to leave that how it is. And then I'll just, for each tool that I'm going to create, I'm going to go down here to groups and I'm going to create a new toolpath group that is below my op1, as you can see here. Um, and, and like I said, that just keeps it nice and clean and makes it easy to see. Uh, so this first tool that we're going to use here is going to be a 2764 Mega Muscle Drill. It is an OSG drill. And we're going to drill out all of these holes here. So I'm going to go to, all I did was I right clicked. Um, and also you can see up here you got your 2D tool pass. Um, here's just a couple of them here. If you click the drop down box, here's uh, all of your 2D. Um, tool pass here. Uh, so I'm going to right click, go to mill tool pass, and I want to drill. Uh, this is just the, the NC name. Um, and really, what you just want to make sure is that you keep the NC name uh, the same for all of your operations. Um, if not, it, it will want to post out uh, each different NC name as a separate program. So I'm going to keep the NC name FlexCare2. Um, the other thing I'm going to do for the time being is I'm going to hide my blank. And I know I didn't mention that before, so I'll, once I get these drilling operations done, I'll kind of explain what, what I just did there. Um, so I'm going to click Entities. Uh, this first one here is asking me to select a point. You can see up here at the top, Select Point. Um, it, I, wherever point I, I select, that's where it's going to want to do a drilling operation. Um, so I want to click on entities and that allows me to just select the holes. 
we'll go down here. Um, and, and there is multiple different ways that you can go about selecting your operations. Um, I don't have a whole lot going on this part. So for me, it's just as easy to go through and select all these holes, make sure I don't miss anything. <clears throat> And the last group here. Okay, so I'm gonna zoom out here and as you can see, I've got all of my holes selected. <clears throat> now what I can do if I want to, um, I, I can actually change the, the sorting. Um, it, it's gonna wanna drill these holes in the exact order that I click them in. And uh, it, you know, if that pattern doesn't um, work well for you, you can always go back and just change the uh, the, the pattern that it takes to drill out all those holes. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and green check here. So now here's where I um, set all of my parameters for this tool. Now, so this first one up here, my toolpath type, I've got my, my drill highlighted here. Um, next, we're gonna go down to tool. Now, I don't have any tools in here. Um, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go to my select tool, library tool and i need to go down to uh, and, and this is something that will be uh we can go over in a, in a later video uh, as you can see we've got some different um, libraries created here where we've created tools that we use in our shop um, so that'll be something that we can cover at a, a later date so right here i've got 2764 mega muscle drill um, and to kind of just follow up on you know, creating your tools What's nice about it is if you've got if you know the the feeds and speeds that you need to run that drill at uh, when you create your tool and you can set those parameters ahead of time. So when I select this tool, these are the parameters that we had previously set for that tool. So anytime I bring it into my master cam file, um, those feeds and speeds are already going to be there. So I, I don't need to mess with any of those. That's exactly how I want to run that tool. Uh, we're going to run at 2,900 RPM at 43 and a half inches per minute. Um, down here in the comment section, um, as an, uh, an operator, you know, somebody's run multiple parts, um, especially when you get into using a lot of different tools, uh, from an operator standpoint, having comments within the program is very useful. Um, so the, whatever I type in here in this box, will show up in, in my program. So as uh, your operator is running your program, if they see a comment, basically what I tend to do in the comment is, okay, for this operation, what am I doing? Um, it, it just makes it nice and easy. So when that operator sees that comment uh, in their program, they know, okay, here's, what, here's what's gonna happen next. So here in the comment, I'm just gonna type in drill, oops, 2764 holes. Um, <clears throat> so I'm gonna move down here to my cut parameters. Um, now we're only drilling through an eighth inch wall. So I'm not gonna change anything here. I'll kind of show you a little bit. Um, these are some just different uh, types of drill cycles or and the drill counter board is just going to go straight into the depth and, you know, straight out. Uh, your pec drill is going to go down a certain depth that you uh, set here in the parameters. Um, it'll, it'll go down that depth, come up, go back down um, that much farther from where it left off. Uh, your chip break is kind of a high speed um, chip break. I mean, it's literally what it's doing. It's breaking the chip. It's not going to come all the way up out of the hole. It's going to stay down in the hole, but it'll come up just a little bit to break that chip off. Um, and then you've got your tapping cycle. Uh, we've put in some, you know, the rigid tapping boring. Um, I know some of these are standard for Mastercam, um, but as you can see, you've got some custom cycles here that you can work with your uh, post processing company who's helping you with your post. Uh, if you need to tweak some things, um, they're more than capable of doing that. Uh, but like I said, I'm gonna keep this drill counter bore operation. I just wanna go straight down into the hole and come straight out. The next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go into my linking parameters. So here we got clearance, retract, my top of stock, and my depth. Um, 
Now, there's also absolute and incremental. Um, this is a kind of a, you know, from a programmer standpoint, it's personal preference. You know, what would you rather program? Uh, would you rather go in absolute? Would you rather program an in incremental? Um, you know, it, it, it's going to work out, you know, as long as you're putting in the, the right locations and the right, uh, the right parameters, um, you should be fine. I, I like to program everything in absolute. So <clears throat> down here, I'm going to start with my depth. All I'm going to do is I'm going to select this button here and then zoom in on my part. And I want to select the bottom of this hole. So that's automatically going to set negative 0.125. Um, and if you're, you know, wondering where this number is coming from, um, you know, earlier I selected or I created that, uh, that WCS that you see right here um, off to the side, that is my zero. That's my X zero, my Y zero, and my Z zero. So the, <clears throat> the distance from my Z zero to the bottom of that hole is negative 0.125. Um, now, if I were to leave it at that, that's really only going to take the tip of that drill to that location and then come straight out. Um, so that's not going to uh, allow my drill to break through the bottom of that hole. So uh, what I would really like with Mastercam here is this calculator. So I'm going to click this calculator and um, all I really need to do is tell it the tool diameter, um, the tip of the tool or the tool tip diameter. And what it does is it calculates um, the distance for that drill to break all the way through. Uh, <clears throat> so all I'm going to do is I'm going to take this number and I want to add it to my depth that I have already have set here. So I'm just going to leave that um, little bubble filled in and I'm going to green check. Um, and what you'll see is this will get added to my, my depth here. There you can see, and now I'm at a negative 0.251744, which uh, should get me all the way through that wall on my tube. Uh, my top of stock, I'm gonna leave it at zero because um, that's where I have my Z0 set is the top of my stock. And my retract point, um, you know, as it goes from hole to hole, where do I want it to come up above the part? Um, and, and what you can do is, you know, since the top of my part is my zero, uh, I can leave it at 0.1. Um, because I'm running this drill kind of fast, what I like to do is add um, a quarter inch. So I want to be, you know, kind of give my, my drill enough time to pick up that, that speed there. Um, so I'm going to set my retract to a quarter inch. And, and what I did with the calculator here to add my depth is something you can also do here in your tip top. Um, and it's kind of back to the whole personal preference thing on how you like the program. Um, I know some people in the depth, they would rather see, you know, exactly the number of that they selected. So the bottom of my, of my hole being at a negative 0.125, um, you know, some, some programmers would like to see that, that negative 0.125, you know, that's the location that they had selected. Um, and by doing that, what they could do then is then activate their tip comp. And, you know, there's that number that I should, you know, added to the, the depth <clears throat> and my linking parameters. So if you want to leave your depth on, you know, the location that you had selected um, and just use tip comps, you know, that's something else you can do too. But since I had already added that depth, um, this extra tip length to my depth, I do not need to keep tip comp activated. So the next thing I want to do down here in my planes, I just want to verify that my WCS, my tool plane, my construction plane, uh, they're all on the, the same plane that I had created. And we're going to go down to coolant. <clears throat> uh, this particular drill, we're going to run with through spindle coolant. Um, and we're going to run it before the operation. So before that tool comes into position, I want my through spindle coolant to kick on. Uh, and everything is good here, so I'm a green check. And there you can see the holes being drilled. <clears throat> okay, so first operation is complete. 
Um, I'm, I'm just going to toggle the, the tool path there just so I can get it off my screen. Now, the next thing that we're going to get into is uh, we're going to mill this slot. Um, and like I said before, I like to keep my master cam file fairly clean. So I'm going to go back to my op one group here and create a new group. And this is going to be my half inch Harvey and mill. Uh, this is a kind of metal tool that we run quite a bit. <clears throat> okay. So, um, like I said, we're going to mill these plots out and, uh, you know, there's multiple different ways that we could go about doing this. Um, this particular end mill has a, uh, a chamfer on the, the end of it. So it's not a flat end mill. Um, so I, I like to ramp with it. Um, if you were using a flat end mill, um, what, what I don't like doing with flat end mills is plunging. Uh, you know, your carbide end mills are very, they're strong, but they're brittle. Um, you don't want to be chipping your, the, the tips of those end mills. So with this end mill having a, um, a chamfer on the bottom of it, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to ramp down this contour here. So as it's following the, the inside of that slot there, it's actually going to be going down as it's going around. Uh, so I'll show you that here. <clears throat> Same thing, I'm going to right click, go up to mill tool pass and select contour. Now here in my chain uh, dialog box, I've got the, um, the choice to do wireframe or do I want to program off my solid? Uh, I don't have any wireframe on this part, so I'm gonna go over to solid and I've got loop, which is a, a like a completed closed um, contour, which is what I'm gonna be using. So I'm gonna deselect this space here and I'm going to, so now you can see the yellow lines there that it's allowing me to select. So I'm gonna select this line here. And this green arrow is just showing me the direction of, of which that tool is gonna to be traveling in, which is uh, the, the right direction that I want it going. Um, you know, another video that we can get into later on is, uh, you know, that really using the differences between climb milling and conventional milling. Um, so with me doing this, <clears throat> I'm actually gonna be climb milling. Um, so like I said, that's the, the green arrow, the direction that's showing there, that's the direction that I would do want it to go. So I'm going to green check that, go over to my tool, Oops. go down to select library tool, get rid of my filter. <clears throat> Here I'm going to select my half inch flat end mill. Uh, actually that was not my Harvey. Um, that's okay. I, I can just set my feeds and speeds to, to what I know I run that Harvey at. Um, so I'm going to run that at 3,900. Uh, and, and we normally run this. Uh, we, the Flex CNC has some different spindles. You've got your 4K spindle, 6K, and uh, a 12K spindle option. Um, so the, the machine that I run a lot of our demos on is a, a 4K spindle, Cat 50 high output machine. <clears throat> Uh, it's got a ZF gearbox on it. Um, so anything under a thousand, you're in first gear. Uh, it's got some massive torque. Um, you know, really good for for big drills. Uh, we did a demo with uh, some flow drilling, uh, in which we we needed about every ounce of torque that machine had. Um, so with that particular machine having a 4K max spindle on it, I keep my RPM at 3,900. And we're gonna run this at 39 and a half inches per minute. Uh, same thing down in the comment. I wanna let my operator know what this tool is gonna be doing. So we are going to ramp our slots. I'm gonna go down to cut parameters. Um, so the compensation type, you got computer, control, wear, reverse wear, off. Um, this is Basically, just telling the the tool which um, type of tool comp are we going to be using. Um, so, using computer, uh, it's taking the diameter of my tool and it, it knows how to which direction to offset itself. Um, if I was going to be using control, I would need to put the diameter of the tool in the machine so the machine knows um, which direction, you know, which way it needs to offset and how much. 
uh, where we'll get into it. You know, all of these we can get into in another video. Um, the where is just using your, your tool compensation within the program to adjust your, um, your slot width and length and whatnot. Um, so we're going to keep it on computer. Um, for this particular case, I'm not going to leave anything on the wall or the floor, um, especially the floor. I need to make sure I break through that, that wall. Um, but what I do need to change is up here in the, the contour type. Um, I don't just want to do a 2D contour. I don't want it to just follow um, that, uh, that loop that I had selected. I want to ramp, and we are going to run this ramp um, using depth. Now, I know that that wall thickness is uh, 0.125, and to, to make sure I break through that wall, um, I'm going to go an extra, uh, let's say for this sake, we'll go an extra 30 thousandths. Um, so what I'm going to do for my ramp depth is I'm going to put in 0.125 plus 0.03. So there's my, you know, essentially the final depth that I needed to go. Um, but I don't want to do that all in one shot. So we're going to take two shots at it. We'll go uh, 77 and a half thou um, for my ramp depth. So basically what that's saying is, uh, where, where that tool starts, when it makes one complete revolution around that contour, uh, it's going to be going down 77 and a half thousand. <clears throat> um, I do want that tool to make a, a pass at the final depth. Uh, that way it cleans everything up in one pass. Or I'm sorry, it takes that last pass at um, your final depth to make sure that all that material uh, gets cleaned up on the same level. Right, so everything else is good here. Uh, what I do need to do is then go into my lead in and lead out. Uh, this is telling the tool <clears throat> uh, how far at what kind of an arc to lead into that cut that I'm telling it to make. Um, so the only thing I need to be conscious of here is making sure that um, I, don't, I don't make that length too long or my arc too big that uh, I'm going to get that tool outside of that slot. So I'm going to take my length down to, uh, let's go 20% on the length and 20% on the arc. Um, these arrows here in the middle, um, the, the arrow going to the right, it's basically going to take all of this information here on my entry, uh, my lead in, and put those same values in my exit or my lead out. <clears throat> so I'm going to lead in. At a 20% length, 20% arc, and I'm going to lead out at the, the uh, same length in the same arc. Um, so everything else is good here. Um, I'm going to go down to my linking parameters. Uh, same as my drill cycle, I'm going to put everything in absolute. And we're going to start with my depth, and I'm going to select the bottom of this slot, negative uh, 0.125. Um, but like up here in my uh, cut parameters where I had added that extra 30 thousandths. I want to make sure that I add the extra 30 thousandths in my depth. So I'm going to go uh, negative 0.125 minus 30 thou, negative 0.155. Uh, top of stock is going to stay at zero. Uh, I'm good with my feed plane at 200 thou above the part and my read track at a quarter inch above the part. Um, Check my planes again. I got up on top, up on top. Uh, same for my construction planes. So we're good there. I'm gonna go to my coolant. Uh, on this particular tool, I want to run flood coolant. Same thing. I'm gonna leave it on before. That way, the coolant is kicking on before that tool uh, gets into position and starts cutting. So everything is good here for this operation. And you can see here my my lead in and my lead out. And you should be able to see here the different steps that we're, we're taking to get through. Um, now, as you can see here, I only did the one slot. Um, and the only reason I do that is, you know, to make sure that I've got everything set right um, without going through the, the hassle of selecting everything first. Um, I want to make sure that all my parameters are set correctly on that first one. Um, that way, you know, like I said, all the clicking that I need to do on those slots, um, I make sure everything's good to go before I do that. So I'm going to go down here to my geometry. And I've got that one chain here, as you can see with the green arrow. 
and I need to add some chains. Same thing, we're gonna keep the loop. Get rid of my face there. <clears throat> and we're just gonna start selecting these slots. Make sure my arrow's going in the right direction. So that one's good. We're gonna come up to this next one. Screen check, arrow's going in the right direction. Select my contour, arrow's going the right direction. Whoa. Select, arrow's going in the right direction. Select, green check, arrow's in the right direction. So I'm good there. So I'm gonna green check and green check. Okay, now as you can see, you don't see all of the other chains that I have created. Um, over here on the left, you see a red X. That's basically telling me, um, hey, something within your, your operation here has changed or something has been added or taken away. Um, uh, Mastercam calls it a dirty operation. And what I need to do is regenerate this dirty operation. So up here uh, with the, the red X, it says regenerate all dirty operations. So I'm gonna select this and now you can see um, all of my slots being machined out there. So everything looks good there. I'm gonna get rid of my tool path. And the last thing we're gonna do here is we're gonna chamfer um, all of the holes and we're gonna chamfer the slots. So I'm gonna add a new toolpath group. We're gonna call this one spot drill. <clears throat> um, so what I could do if I if I wanted to is um, I, I'm gonna run a drill cycle to chamfer the holes, and I'm going to run a contour cycle to chamfer my slot. Um, but as, yeah, as I know, you know, depending on how many features you have on this part. Um, it, that can be a lot of clicking. Um, so I am gonna kind of cheat a little bit. Um, I'm gonna run the same kind of cycle uh, as my drill, because I already have all 36 of those holes selected. So I'm actually gonna copy this operation and paste it down here underneath my spot drill. Um, the, re the reason for doing that is now all I need to do is go into my parameters and uh, start at the top and I need to select a new tool. Um, let's see here, oops, let's get rid of the filter. There it is. Uh, change my speed. We'll go 8.4. <clears throat> uh, so the feeds and speeds are good there and instead of drilling the holes, we're going to chamfer the holes. I'm gonna go down to my cut parameters. I'm running the same kind of uh, drill cycle there. Um, so the only thing I'm gonna change here is my linking parameters. And uh, for this particular tool, it's a 90 degree indexable, uh, it, it's got a carbide insert <clears throat> that on, on the tool itself. And uh, the, the nice thing that I've kind of learned just uh, by, by running it and programming it, um, with it being a 90 degree, tool, um, what I can do, just all, all I'm trying to do is just kind of kiss that hole. Uh, just get rid of the burr. I'm not trying to put a, a, major, cha make a, <clears throat> a major chamfer on the hole. Um, I just want to, like I said, just get that burr off and kind of make it look nice and pretty. And uh, something that I've learned is with a 90 degree um, spot drill, if I go down half of the diameter of that hole, um, that, that should leave a, a good finish uh, chamfer on there and get rid of that burr. So I'm going to go negative 0.4219, which is my 2764, and I'm going to divide that by two. Let's try that again. Negative 0.4219 divided by two. There we go. Negative 0.21095. And that's the only thing that I need to change here in this. Um, in my linking parameters. Um, this tool does not have through spindle coolant, so I do need to turn that off and turn my flood coolant on. And everything else is good. Now, as you can see, instead of just you know bringing up my tool path, um, I did change parameters. So there again, I've got the red X, so I do need to regenerate that operation. And there's my tool path.
and like I said, you know, depending on what kind of features you have on this part, you know, don't, I don't, I don't want to be the one to say that copying and pasting is, is the way to go. Um, but it definitely was a lot faster than me selecting 36 holes all over again. Um, now the next thing I'm going to do is, well, the first thing I'm going to do is get rid of my tool path. Um, <clears throat> we're going to chamfer the slots next. Uh, it's the same thing. I've already got all the slots selected. So I'm going to take this, uh, operation here with my half inch Harvey copy and paste it down below here and go back in and just change my parameters. So I'm going to go back and use my one inch spot drill. Um, I'm good on the spindle speed. Uh, we'll slow this down. Uh, it's only got one cutting edge, so we'll slow it down a little bit. We'll go 24 <clears throat> inches per minute. Uh, instead of ramping the slots, we are going to chamfer the slot. I'm going to move on to my cut parameters. Uh, we're not ramping my chamfer. We're actually going to use a 2D chamfer. So the, the width and the tip offset, um, these values here is what allows that, uh, that tool to know how big of a chamfer I want to put on there. Um, and, and like I said, with, same with the holes. I just want to kind of kiss up that edge a little bit, take the burr off of there. So I'm only going to do about a 5,000 chamfer. And uh, my tip offset here is basically um, asking where, all, where at on that tool do you want to, to put a 5,000 chamfer. Uh, you don't want to use just the tip of that tool. Um, I want to move up a little bit on the insert. So I'm going to leave it at 0.1. I'm going to leave everything else the same. That looks good. <clears throat> Uh, this is a slightly bigger tool than that half inch end mill. Um, it's a one inch spot drill. So I'm going to take down my length and my arc just a little bit to just ensure that I am inside my slot when I do my lead in and my lead out. And uh, we'll double check this when I go and regenerate this operation. Um, I'm going to mention something else back here in the cut parameters with the width and the tip offset. This sets your depth for you. So if I'm running this off of the top of my part, which is my machine, or yeah, my uh, WCS Z0, what I want to do then is down on my linking parameters, instead of running that chamfer at negative 155 thou, um, I want to leave this at zero and let my cut parameters uh, control my depth for me. Um, so that's the only thing I need to change there. Uh, my planes are still good. My coolant's still on flood, so that's good. And this operation should be good to go. So we'll regenerate, turn on my toolpath, and there we go. As you can see, there's my lead in, my lead out. And we've got all of the slots being chamfered. <clears throat> so um, everything looks good here. We've got our, our drilling, our milling, our chamfering. Um, so the next thing that we want to do is we want to uh, verify that, um, you know, it, really everything is as we think it should be. Um, so what we're going to do here is I'm going to click my flux care tube group up here, which is going to put a green check on all of these operations. And up here in the top, I'm going to verify. And what it's going to do is going to pop up a new window here and uh, allow us to run a simulation. Um, of this program. <clears throat> I'll blow it up here. I'm going to slow it down. Um, something else that is, is really nice about this uh, verification uh, simulation is because I'm using different tools, uh, different operations, <clears throat> what I can do is I can select this color loop. Uh, and what it will do is take every operation and make it a different color. Um, that way, as I watch this simulation, um, depending on the tour or the operation, that the color of the part that is being machined is going to, you know, be different. So, you know, if I see something wrong and, and I'm trying to figure out which tool it was, um, I can, as long as I know the um, operations that I had them in, I can kind of go off of color. You know, if I mess something up, is it, is it my yellow, my purple, uh, my green, you know, so be it. <clears throat> so here now you can see the re here's the reason why I brought in that blank tube um, 
like I said, I wanted to be able to see the, the material being removed instead of just simulating on the, the finished part with those slots and holes already there. So I wouldn't be able to see the, the material being removed. So um, that's why I brought that blank stock over my part so I can see this. So we'll try to get this all in one view here. I'm gonna hit play. Here you can see the holes being drilled. And up next, we got our slots being milled. There you can see we're, we're ramping down. You can see the, the material being cut away <clears throat> until we finally break through. One more slot here. And then the, the next thing we did was we chamfered the holes. You see the spot drill running over top of all the holes and then on the slot. There you can see the uh, finished part there. Right, and it's kind of hard to see just because of kind of how close I'm getting in here, but um, you can see a little bit of the green up here on, on the slot. Uh, if I gave this master cam time to enhance the view, uh, it should show me, you know, the uh, the chamfer there on the slot, but uh, <clears throat> the the chamfer wasn't very big to begin with, and like I said, it kind of takes uh, the simulation a little bit to enhance everything. Um, but yeah, so there's the simulation. Um, kind of just a nice, easy way to kind of verify, double check yourself, make sure that you know I, I didn't put a hole in the wrong spot, or for my spot drill when I chamfered the slots that I wasn't. Um, outside the the slot and kind of cutting on material that um, I shouldn't be. Um, so the the simulation is a, a very nice tool to use. Okay, so I'm I'm comfortable with uh, how this part is looking. Uh, the next thing that we need to do is we need to post this program out and get some G code. So <clears throat> um, as you can see here, I've got all the operations still checked uh, with that green check mark. And what I'm going to do next is come up to this G1, which is going to create my uh, G code. It's going to ask me where I want to save this program. We'll go into this folder here. And I'm going to name my file with my program number and my part name. Keep it at FlexCare tube there. So that's good. We'll save it. And here is going to be our G code program. There we go. So here we've got the program number like I had um, set when I did the, uh, uh, the, the first initial settings when, and when I started on this file. <clears throat> um, the machine that I'm using, date, uh, and the, uh, the tool list here. Um, so everything looks good. Here's my drill cycle, uh, ramping my slots. Um, and, and here's just a good time that, you know, if you feel like you need to modify or change anything, um, you know, this, you can do it here. Uh, you know, when you upload this machine or this program, I'm sorry, to the, to the machine, you can make any changes on the machine itself. Um, the, the Flex NC software has a, a really nice editor page where I can kind of do the same thing here, this uh, find and replace um, sequence. If I need to change tool numbers or, you know, what have you, anything I need to do, the, the editor screen on the, the uh, Delta Tau controller on our Flex CNC machine is a, a very um, user-friendly software to use to make any modifications that I need. Um, so now that I, I've got my program posted out and everything's good to go, um, the only thing I need to do now is um, get this program on my flash drive and uh, get it going on the machine. Which, uh, when, it, when I had this posted out, I already had it saved uh, to the flash drive. So I can just close out of this and we'll uh, just double check it real quick. Yep, there it is. There's my NC file. <clears throat> um, so like I said, it's just a matter of taking my flash drive in. Uh, getting it out to the machine and uh, saving it on the, the machine so we can uh, start making some parts.
Um, so there, there's kind of just the 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 first initial um, video just to kind of show you some uh, simple operations and um, just to kind of give you a layout of how, how you can go through your match game file and program your part. Um, and like I said before, this is going to be uh, the first of many master game videos that we will share. Uh, we'll talk about some different features. Uh, we'll, we'll add um, some different parts, different profiles, and uh, kind of show you more than just, you know, some simple drilling and slotting and chamfering. Uh, but uh, yeah, like I said, it's uh, just the introduction or the introduction to um, what we're going to be doing here with MasterCam. And uh, we hope you guys stay tuned. And uh, thanks for, thanks for uh, sticking with me.